So we Minnesota Fighting Vikings fans love some Afadi Odenabo. You love the story. You love the grit. You love the grind. You love the getting after it. Seventh round pick coming out of the Northwestern University. Uh, and he fell to the seventh round just because he didn't check all the boxes of what the NFL likes in defensive ends. Uh, he's a, a step slow. He's got shortish arms, but they can't measure a guy's hat. They can't measure the – well, maybe they can't measure the heart because they measured Maurice Hurst, but – Anyway, uh, but he fell in the draft despite uh, an amazing final season in Evanston. 12 tackles for loss, 10 sacks uh, in the Big Bad Big Ten. Uh, and then was fallen in the draft and then bounced around between teams, the Browns and the Cardinals, came back to the Vikings, uh, didn't go to the Eagles 53 because he, he saw more opportunity on the Vikings practice squad. Then he changed positions from right to end to left to end to defensive interior, whatever it took to help the team. And then he finally... Finally established himself last year uh, with seven sacks. And that's why uh, Afadi was the reason why the Vikings were able to lowball Everson Griffin. And why when all the mock draft Knicks were like, well, they, they lost Everson Griffin, so they must take an edge rusher, AJ Epinesa, in the first round. Click. Or uh, Yetter Gross Meadows. Well, Gross Meadows, even though he's on the IR. Gross Meadows is off to a nice start, but anyway. Uh, but the reason why the Vikings were so okay with letting Everson Griffin go, letting Stephen Weatherly go in free agency, is that they know what they had in Afadi Odenabo. Uh, it was going to be Afadi and Daniil. Woo! Nice little combination there. Then... Daniil tweaked his neck, and then the Vikings traded for Yannick. Now, you can forgive uh, Afadi's in-the-moment fool's goal tweet right after the trade because he didn't know how bad Daniil's uh, injury was in all likelihood. So what he saw was the Vikings making this trade for Yannick, uh, going to replace him. Ah, oh, it's going to be Daniil and Yannick, and blah, 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 blah. I I'm back on the bench. Nah. But in reality, it was the Vikings trading to replace uh, Daniil with Yannick. So that makes a little bit more sense now. Uh, Fadi's been starting, and he's quietly uh, been playing extremely well for the Vikings. He leads the team uh, in pressures with 17. Not Yannick. Afadi leads the team in pressures with 17 uh, and also finally got home for his first sack uh, of the season against Seattle. And as we've said on here before, pressures uh, are like lottery tickets and sacks are winning the lottery. You're going to have a better shot the more tickets that you have. Now, some guy can have one ticket and then he wins the lottery. Ooh, bully on him. There's a bit of puck luck uh, when it comes to sacks, but just generate those pressures and guess what? Good things will happen. Uh, and in fact, uh, he's led the team uh, in pressures in three straight games. He's had five uh, against the Titans, five against the Texans, and five against Seattle. Uh, and also, he's been the bright spot uh, amongst a very otherwise eh, Vikings pass rush outside of Yannick, who's uh, currently tied for third in the NFL uh, in sacks with five. Also, uh, what's been impressive about Afadi is that uh, a lot of edge rushers, they have their side and then they learn that they have a full dossier on their opponents that's on their specific side and blah, 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 blah. And then they're good to go. Uh, but uh, uh, Yannick, Yannick likes to travel around. He, he likes to uh, go up against left tackles and right tackles wherever he feels like he can get an edge, wherever the defensive coordinator feels like uh, he can get a choice matchup. So uh, conversely, uh, uh, Afadi's had to move around as well, and he's been playing extremely well from both sides. Uh, he, he's played 111 snaps on the left side. He's played 112 snaps on the right side. He's been bringing, bringing heat from both. And also, he's only played 15 snaps inside where he thrived in a rotational role last year. So Fadi is playing extremely good football, and uh, yet again, uh, being that team first guy. You know, wherever Andre Patterson needs me, that's where I'm going to go. That's where I'm going to play extremely well. And you need guys like that uh, on the team. That's why, uh, you know, uh, team first, selfless, humble guys like Afadi who just grind. They don't blame circumstances. They don't blame the draft. They don't blame this. They don't blame that. They just get after it whenever they have opportunity. That's why fans love uh, players like that. And also, it's very important for Afadi money-wise uh, because next year he's due to become a restricted free agent. Uh, so it does make sense. The Vikings, you know, slap the second-round tender on him. So that's three and a half plus million, uh, pending what it's going to be next year uh but uh if if and when daniel hunter is back at 100 percent, and certainly do expect him back at 100 percent next year and then if the vikings do consider keeping yannick long term either on a long-term deal or franchise tag him next year uh then what's afadi's role going to be is he back to being that third defensive end rotational guy getting snaps wherever uh third down getting uh, on the inside of that nascar package now it's less than ideal uh, obviously especially since he's starting to really establish himself but uh, again, he is a team first guy. And also, you know, if 
the Vikings decide that it is going to be Daniil and Yannick being the best edge rusher doing the NFL. All of a sudden, Afadi, who's established himself as very highly productive both last year as well as this season and the rest of this year, and then all of a sudden, him on a second round uh, ten, a restrict for agent tender, that's pretty valuable trade bait. It is because it's a passer, get the passer league, and Afadi's shown that he can definitely get the passer. Uh, or maybe the Vikings be like, well, Yannick, we love you, but we're going to roll, roll with Afadi and Daniil. We're going to go with our original plan. So we're going to let you go. We're going to get a third round compensatory pick in, in uh, return after you're signed somewhere else for a bajillion dollars. So deuces. It certainly could be it. It certainly could be uh, the future. But as of right now, I love uh, seeing what we have from Afadi, who's a little bit slow out of the gates the first two weeks. But then again, everyone was. But now he's really bringing together 15 total pressures in the last three games, plus a sack. And eventually, all those pressures will become more and more sacks. He's going to carve himself out a really nice season. Keep hope alive for 95. Afadi Odenimo getting after it. But your thoughts? Uh, love for Afadi. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Want to support that work? Pull some of the Venmo. But until next time, Skull production value.